excited to have Hamel here because he is really passionate and knowledgeable about these topics. And so if the ever elusive love <laughs> feels like it's not coming to you, <laughs> Hamel is here to tell you everything you want to know about how love will manifest for you. So first of all, Hamel, welcome once again. And let's talk, let's talk about this and have you start by telling us why you chose this topic. And then let's just dive in. Yeah, I, I think it's one of the most popular or most frequent questions I get, and probably yourself in your coaching business as well. Because mm -hmm. um, people have heard, in, in my case, people have heard of manifesting, and then they say, but how? But how will it happen? It hasn't happened all these years, uh, or I've had this person and that person, but now I'm maybe I'm getting older, or I don't feel as confident about myself. And so, you know, th they have a certain notion that uh, it's going to be difficult. And oftentimes the, the question is from a vibe of doubt and anxiety and, and so on and so on. So that's why that, that's why we're doing this. I think it's one of the most uh, frequently asked questions, and I think it will help a lot of people. Yeah, it, I think it is one of the most frequently asked questions. And Yes, if you've been out there for a while and you're feeling like it hasn't happened yet, you're probably asking not only how will it happen, but why will it happen now? <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good question. I think um, so. To, to uh, dive right deep deep into it, essentially, um, so to say like um, it hasn't happened before, so why should it happen now? This is the thing. My view with manifesting is we attract a reflection of ourselves. So if we're not getting something, there's something within us that we're projecting in some way. Oftentimes, it's, it's a conflict, oftentimes. So when I work with clients or people on my Manifesting Excellence webinars, I'll say, if it's about relationships, I'll say, okay, uh, and oftentimes it might be a woman wanting to attract a man. So I will say, okay, what if the man of your dreams walked into your life today, right now, how would you feel? And that, at that moment, oftentimes they will step back and go, oh, and I would say, okay, what was that O about? And they'd say, well, I'm not sure how it feels. I said, okay, well, what's that about? And so sometimes it might be, I might lose my freedom or I might lose my independence. Okay, I said, well, that's a clue because deep down subconsciously, you think you're going to lose something. So whilst you think on a conscious level that you're trying to attract what you want, but deep down, you're not really aligned to it. So it's clearing up the conflict. So we're ready to receive whatever we want right now. In this case, it's a man. I've done demos with people wanting to attract um, wealth or cars or whatever it might be. Be, it's being willing to accept your manifestation right now and being okay to have it. If you're not, it's kind of like a hot potato. So if you attract the lover or the money, um, you're, you may sabotage it because you're not you're not comfortable having it here, even in, in your emotions. So, so uh, you may not uh, retain it. So essentially, in terms of the how, um, it's, it's really about realizing that everything is a reflection of ourselves. And just because we haven't had it before, it's, uh, it's, it's going deep within ourselves to explore that topic. How do we feel about it? How do I feel about having it now? Um, is there any hesitation other than any, uh, other than deep joy and excitement about really having it right now? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and I love what you're talking about too because I think some of this is so insidious and some of it is so invisible sometimes to us, and yeah. we don't even recognize sometimes some of these these things are at play. You know, it was just kind of interesting when you were. Um, when you were saying how if if your perfect man were to walk into your life right now i'm sure there are some women listening that that would feel oh yeah wow that would be so exciting and i'm also sure there are some people listening who are also going well oh on some level am i really ready for that or does that feel a little scary or like you said is there conflict is there a bit of inner conflict just as if we were to say if you were to have a million dollars come your way right now, would you be ready for that? Well, we all think we would. Yeah. I think the thing is to re to ask, are you really ready for it? Literally, if it's here right now, that's the thing. Because oftentimes people can conceptualize things and think, yes, that would be great. That would be great. But when it's really imminent, how do you feel? Do you start? Do your palms start to get sweaty? Do you start to get a bit agitated? That's the clue. So listen to your body, but not just, um, again, not just conceptualize it and, and be hypothetical, but literally having it right now, whatever it, whatever it is that you want. And in what you just said there, uh, Michelle, what, also, what it also reminded me is if someone thinks of like, when you said the... Uh, um, if you could have your perfect man right now, sometimes some some women might say, ah, but he doesn't exist, or I can't really have him, or I'm not ready for him, or I'm not good enough. So that's already a clue of some of the stuff that's coming up. So even just saying that, uh, attracting the ideal man or the perfect man or the man that's perfect for me, uh, if a woman says that and there's hesitation. So when you're manifesting 
no hesitation. No, it should be completely like natural, familiar. That's how you want. So you want to explore your explore your beliefs behind it. So no hesitation. It's got to be totally familiar, second nature. When you when you clear out the um the noise and and, and the doubts, then you're all you're left with is is amazing um ex expectation, anticipation, and you're living in the energy of of having it already. And then then you get the manifestation. If you're always thinking like, is it out there? Is it out there? If you're asking that question, you're vibrating the question: Is it out there? Is it out there? You're not actually living in the energy of having what you want so notice it's like when people say uh, they want money they're offering the vibration of wanting money but not of actually having money and actualizing it so are you act living in the energy of what you want as if it's already here now that's also a way to look at it mm -hmm. yeah well and living in the energy of having it already it it changes things because when we're just in the energy of want i mean the word want or wanting almost has inherent in it in some ways a sense of lack there's a certain amount of lack almost built into that wanting kind of yeah. feeling versus having kind of feeling right uh and also people get very familiar with the chasing and the wanting because they've been doing it for so long. That's all they know now. Like, oh, why isn't it happening? Why isn't it happening? Because they're in, in the wanting mode and the chasing mode rather than the actual energy of having because it's just familiar. And maybe society looks at it a certain way. Culturally, that's what people people keep asking them. So so they kind of get, habitually get into that mode. So you want to be in the energy of having it and be totally at peace with where you are then. Whatever happens or doesn't happen, you're at peace with it. So one thing to ask yourself is if I don't get what I want, what comes up for me? How do I feel? It, right? down what comes up so do you feel like you're not enough do you feel like a failure do you feel like a loser you got to handle that stuff because that's the stuff that's all baggage that's connected to your outcome you want to clear that out and take all the pressure off so then you're living in the moment loving your life and when you attract a relationship a man it's from the energy of only what you want there's no pressure there's no tension you're loving life and you're enjoying the process now so when you go on a date or when you go into a relationship there's actually no tension and pressure because you're actually enjoying the process now because you've got no downside you've handled it so there's no there's nothing about being fa a failure um not needing to urgently get married or whatever else it's, it's just taking all the tension and the anxiety out of it mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and and sometimes it's fear, sometimes it's conflict, sometimes it's believing or not believing that we're worthy of having what we desire or that we can have what we want, can have what we desire. So I'm sure you've heard people say similar things to what I've heard people say, well, I don't know if I can have that, or I don't know if I believe my man is still out there, or you know, I think I think my man must have married someone else or whatever version of that right. is. All the good ones are taken. Yeah. Um, you know, that kind of thing. I th the, th the thing is this, um, it's really about realizing it's an abundant universe. So you, you often hear it as a, as a cliche and people say, yes, it is. But do you live from that energy or is it just a theory for you? So if you really know it's an abundant universe, how would you be acting now in terms of a, a, a lover that you want? How would you be acting? So that's a thing to look into as well. So you might say to yourself, it's an abundant universe, but is that how you're feeling? Are you Instead, are you focusing on scarcity? Like, oh, you've you've had your best relationship so far that you think, or you think he's not out there, or he's married someone else or whatever else. So, so it's really, are you living in abundance? I've worked many times with people who are women who've come out of relationships thinking that was their best relationship. And I say, well, Yes, if you want to think that way, that's fine. But if you're wanting another relationship, you don't really want to entertain that thought. What if actually the best is yet to come? Because you're always evolving, including your own energy and your own vibe. So you're always attracting something as a stepping stone. So everything is like a platform that you build upon to attract something even greater. So, and the universe will provide you whatever you resonate with. So if your belief system is, I've had the best I can, it's not out there, and Mr. Right has gone, that's what you'll get the reflection of. And that's why people get frustrated and disappointed. So deep down, you've got to genuinely know that not only is he out there but it's, it's happening in fact energetically you've already got him that that's how you want to be and if that feels a bit uncomfortable if it doesn't feel like that you can hold on to that thought that's where you're going to explore that's where the little beliefs and the little thoughts will come in um like oh he's not out there or it's difficult for me or this or that and and one more thing about um you know uh, is he out there etc cetera, etc cetera. sometimes people will focus on past energy so they might look at past relationships and so just be aware of where you're putting your energy are you putting it on past relationships so you're then vibrating from that and you're now not offering a clean fresh energy so the best place to be is when you've handled stuff the baggage if you want to call it that um it then feels exciting it feels tingly it's like a fresh love because you've cleared the the you've cleared the board for everything now you're, you're ready for something amazing and exciting that's where you want to be at so you're not trying to create from past stuff that will automatically happen, but you've got to be in a fresh, exciting place. That's the clue. Yeah, you know, as you were speaking there, 
I was thinking uh, it's it's something to remember that if you feel like you're starting from nothing or you've got kind of a clean slate, so to speak, that's actually a really great energy to invite something new into your life from. Yes. Because we know that nature abhors a vacuum. Yep. So you want to be conscious about what you allow to come into that vacuum yep. and what you choose to invite into that vacuum. But if you're listening to this right now and it just feels like, hey, you know what, I got nothing going on in terms of this love life. One way to look at it is that's a really great place to be starting from. Uh, you're starting kind of afresh from this new start. You're you're starting with an empty slate. And so you can invite and choose in what you want. Am I right? Do yeah, you agree? absolutely. And, you know, as you were saying that, I was just thinking that sometimes people are scared of having a, a fresh slate. They're scared of having nothing. That's right, why right. they. That's why people create clutter. That's why they, they they hold on to emotional stuff. That's why they hold on to past relationships and, uh, you know, past um, text messages or emails or whatever else it might be. So really, you know, if you're looking for a husband or a long-term partner, if he was here, what would you have? Would you still have the, the ex's text messages? Would you? Would you have the email? You wouldn't. You'd be embracing what you have right now. So live in the energy of having what you want let go of what you need to sh to shed shed that and create space for for what you want so absolutely it's about creating the, the space and this is the thing the, the universe um from that nothingness that's you're, you're giving it space to orchestrate its magic but if you're consciously holding on to stuff trying to force it create it you're trying to impose it from your own conscious will and that's not generally where it comes from so uh so it's really being uh, and, the, and the feeling is the clue it's being literally being able to be uh, energetically and emotionally kind of naked in the sense of being open to the universe rather than holding on to things to protect you that's often why we hold on to things and so it's healing whatever you need to so you're really in the now ready to um to experience what you want mm -hmm. yeah so hamal do you believe like i do that we are actually in the process of creation of creating things in our life through our thoughts and through our words and so to be very conscious of the thoughts that we think and the words that we speak, make sure we're speaking into what we want to create rather than what we don't want to create. Do you believe yeah. that or is that kind of your way of yeah. looking at things? Absolutely. I agree. And yeah, so you've got to essentially embody the energy of it in terms of thinking, talking, speaking and acting of, uh, of, of being where you want to be. So like, like we were saying earlier, that you don't want to be living as if you're always chasing. So, so people might say, oh, but how am I meant to date? Or how am I meant to use dating apps or dating agencies or however they're finding people? Yes, but do it in the energy that all, what you want has already done. And this is part of the joy of the process and following the steps to, to have it in the physical. So, so like when you go on a date, you're not chasing it. You're, you've, you've already got what you want deep down, but you're going on the, on the date for the joy of the of the date, the joy of the process to experience what you experience. You know, people get caught up in the having of things, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a million dollars or a certain job or whatever else it might be. Um, but it's the energy, it's the vibe that it gives you and the feeling that it gives you. So you want to already have that and enjoy the process. And then that energy will give you the right insights. It will bring in the right people to make things happen, to introduce you, to, to guide you to the right apps or the right situations or the right resources that you need. Um, but if you're always in the energy of chasing, chasing, or why am I single? Why am I single? So just like you were saying, Michelle, they're, they're talking about what they don't want, which is that they want to stay single. And the universe says single, single, single. So let me guide you into the right apps just to stay single, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Right, right. Yes. Right. So, so, be, so literally, whatever you want, if you're living if five years from now, how would you like your life to be? Live in that energy now and really live it. Don't just do it for a fleeting moment, but that's who you are now and go forward from that. Mm -hmm. So if I can be just kind of uh, posing another question that I think may be going in the minds of someone else, uh, it, uh, of someone else who may be listening. So to some people who may be not as familiar with this kind of work and who may not have really experienced anything about what you're talking about here, it may not have experienced this in their life. There could be some resistance because they're like, well, it feels phony and fake for me to pretend that I'm in the energy of having something that is not yet present in my life. I mean, I can just kind of feel like a certain resistance kind of coming up. I'm just thinking back to when I was single for many years. I was single till I was 43 when I met my husband. And um, I can remember during some kind of, you know, darker periods of that period of time having the kind of thoughts like you know uh the kind of thoughts we've been talking about my guy's not out there i'm never gonna find him it seems to work out for other people not so much for me 
Now, obviously, I've evolved a lot since then and um, have a wonderful relationship. And I also know back then I might have been kind of resistant to this. I would have been thinking there would have been like a little cynical part of me that would have been coming up, perhaps, that said, I don't know. I mean, this seems kind of crazy to be acting like I have this when I don't have this and I don't see how it's coming. So I just want to like, you know, like just address that because I think yep. it's sort of an element that might be in the room here. Yeah. I, so might see, I might see him over there. <laughs> so so there's a few things. First of all, I would say, OK, well, first of all, what's the resistance to it? Explore the feelings you have. Oftentimes, we're not in a great place when we have resistance. That's also a clue sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, am I unhappy about where I am now? So my remember what I said earlier, it's taking all that out of it. You know, you want to not be unhappy. So what's making me unhappy? Is it my identity of being single or not having found someone or feeling like I've tried so hard and it's still not here? So you want to re resolve that and be at peace with it, first of all. Um, in terms of thinking of something that's not actually here, well, it's really, um, it, it's really about enjoying the journey of it. Now, let, let me put it another way. You've probably tried everything else. So what else have you got to lose as well, by the way? So right, right, right. That, I like that. I mean, I, I mean, if you have better options, go for them. And if they work, great. If they don't, then come back to it. So so <laughs> at, at least you know this is there. So, so I mean, that's I, I believe people should do what works for them. So do it. But energetically, this is the way that things happen. So th that energy, and again, it's not, just pretending and acting it, you've, you've genuinely got to believe it as well. That's the thing, though. And that can, it's a, it's a progressive thing. So today, you, you know, you work on it a bit, you clean up some thoughts, and then tomorrow there's a bit more, and suddenly it starts to feel more real. And then what happens? Suddenly something happens, which gives you a bit of confidence, a bit of reassurance. Then, you, then, then you've got that, uh, re that experience to uh, elevate it even further and have even more conviction and it gets stronger and stronger. So, so really, it's, uh, so it's not just pretending or acting. It's really you want it authentically because that's where you manifest from. It's your authentic energy um so if, if like you're pretending something but deep down you don't believe it and then it doesn't happen and you go there you go i knew it wouldn't well there's the clue <laughs> if you knew it wouldn't there you go you've, you've just manifested what you wanted so you want to clean that up where you're living in the energy that that and and, and you, what what i said earlier is that you take that pressure away you take the attachment away that if it doesn't happen and uh, then you know um, that you don't feel like you're a failure or whatever. So you want to take all that stuff out of it. So now no pressure, you enjoy the journey of it and you go with that. So then that way, that way you're not putting a lot of pressure on it or of anxiety on it. You're much calmer and you're enjoying just each experience. And if it's not for you, you move on to the next experience and then you find more of what you want rather than fearing what you don't want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, when we're out there dating, uh, we can, we don't even realize how much our energy can come across. I mean, I think this is true for all aspects of lives, but I, but I think when we're out there dating and we are in that energy of feeling relaxed and at peace with how the universe, God, the universe, whatever you believe in is going to provide for you the deepest desires of your hearts. We show up with a totally different energy than that anxiousness or that neediness or that cynicism or whatever may be going on. And I know in my own journey, that's a whole nother story, but in my own journey, going from those thoughts that I described to you uh, just a few minutes ago to coming to believe that not only would I meet and attract the man of my dreams, but that it was inevitable that that was going to happen. Okay. was a powerful journey and when i was really in, when i was really encompassing that belief that's when things really started to shift and part of it was that i was showing up differently i was showing up in an, in an energy of of faith and hope and love and and i wasn't showing up in an energy of like doubt or fear or cynicism or lack and uh, it really makes an enormous difference. What would you say was a catalyst for you to make that change from where you were to shifting towards that? I'm sure it was a progressive journey, but what was the catalyst that made well, you? It was, it was a journey. It was a journey um, in working with, uh, you know, I worked with all kinds of mentors, coaches, counselors, did a lot of different programs and things like that. And for me, one of the things that was really powerful, and it's part of what we've been talking about today, is becoming aware of what these beliefs were that were operating underneath the surface. And then I began to see that my thoughts were influencing my actions and how I was showing up in the world. My thoughts of fear or lack, or, you know, you're too old, you're not enough this, you're too much that, all the good ones are taking these kind of things. 
that had been going on, um, once I could kind of see that those beliefs were operating underneath the system, underneath the surface, it was like a hard drive in a computer. I, w I hadn't necessarily seen them, but they were like running the whole show. So once I was able to kind of bring those to the surface for me, then I was able to kind of like look at them in, in just kind of a benign way, not a, not a judgmental way, but kind of said, hmm, well, isn't that interesting that that is there? wonder you know i wonder what's that where that what what's going on with that and is that really tr true or is there another possibility and i began to see that there were some other possibilities i didn't necessarily have to stick with that there were other possibilities and then i was able to create in my mind other new possibilities and so then i was be i began to believe differently i just began to see things differently i began to see at least into the place of possibility so like you're describing it was a journey it was a process and i came to believe like i said that not only would i meet and attract the man of my dreams but that it was inevitable and uh, sometimes i would even say the man of my dreams or better like giving that possibility that maybe i hadn't even dreamed up how wonderful this could be like like mind stretching, dream stretching kind of love. And this is the thing in what you said that you created the space for it. So like you you identified what was going on there and then you kind of realized that it also matched what you were attracting on the outside. <clears throat> so you kind of softened it. You dissociated a bit from it and you created space. And I think that's a key thing because if, if our psyche is taken up with the things that we don't want, there's no space for what we want to come in. And sometimes you might get some hope, some glimmer. If it doesn't fully realize, then again, that's giving you a clue that that space is taken up with something else. So you're getting glimpses, but you want the full space for everything that you want and then allow it in essentially but yeah yeah and you know it's it's funny this is kind of a, a funny thing which i haven't shared that often uh some people in this audience may have heard me share this somewhere along the way over the last decade plus that i've been doing these things but you know i got i kind of i've kind of made my own version of kind of a vision board Mm -hmm. But it wasn't the typical vision board where you're like cutting pictures out of magazines or things like that. Because for me, I couldn't necessarily see myself in those kind of vision boards if I'm using pictures of other people or, or things like that. That's just not my way of envisioning. That works for some people. And if it does, that's great. But I did kind of my own version of a vision board, but it was not very visual, so to speak. Uh, I got a big old piece of poster board. And I wrote like, um, like the, I wrote different um, categories of qualities that I might like to have, like character qualities, professional qualities, personality qualities, attributes of someone that I would like love to be with, right? The kind of person that I would love to be with. And then I got all these different colors of sticky notes. So for each category, I had a different color of sticky notes. And anytime I would think of something, no matter what it was, I, I kept these sticky notes in my purse. But wherever I went, I had these sticky notes with me. And whenever I think of something, I jot something down on these sticky notes. Just qualities, characteristics, wonderful, delicious, yummy things I'd love to have in a partner, right? And I started sticking them on this poster board underneath the appropriate categories. Sometimes they were, you know, fun things, silly things. Sometimes they were, you know, really important things, really important things to me. So I started focusing on if I could have anything I wanted, suspend the disbelief, suspend the lack, suspend the cynicism. If I could just have anything I wanted, what, what would that be like? What would that look like? What would our relationship be like? So I started posting all these sticky notes, got hundreds of them. I actually still have them. <laughs> and there was initially you know, kind of this thought like, oh boy, you know, who am I kidding? Can I really have this? You know, those little thoughts started to come mm -hmm. up a little bit, but I kept going. I kept going. I'm just thought, nope, I'm just going to say if I could have anything I wanted, if anything were possible in this partnership that I dream of, I'm sticking it on there. So I kept this poster board. It went on for maybe a year and a half, couple of years. <clears throat> and something interesting happened. As that the more I kept doing this, the more I kind of started getting really excited. Ah, I, that's I started to feel like almost like goosebumps when I put things on there because I thought, man, if I could even be with someone who had even like a 
portion of this. Can you even mm-hmm. imagine the kind of relationship that would be possible, right? Mm-hmm. So I started kind of getting excited and excitement started building inside of me. Well, so I did this for a while, uh, met my husband, things went really well, things just happened naturally, gracefully, smoothly, which was not my experience previously, yep. you know, and we ended up getting married. We've now been married now for 15 years. And mm-hmm. after we'd been married for a while, I pulled that thing out. Well, mm-hmm. guess what? Mm-hmm. Almost every single thing I put on that <laughs> board. I felt had come to pass, had come through. So <laughs> one night I sat my husband down and I stuck these sticky notes all over him. I said, his body. I said, look at this. It was amazing. Wonderful. Yeah. And uh, as you were saying that, you, you essentially overwhelmed the, the cynicism and the doubt with the, with the I'm going to do this. I'm going to, this is mine. This is mine. And so on and so on with the post-it notes. And you just kept adding and kept adding and you pushed through that. Um, as you were sharing that, one thought came to me, which is that um, when someone's, let's say, having doubts like, oh, am I always going to stay single? Am I a failure? One sort of quick technique someone could use, just like a, a, a quick one, really, just to get the ball rolling to handle those doubts is like, well, just turn that around. Like, well, what if I'm not a failure? What if I'm not going to stay single? Because although you're, you're phrasing it as what you don't want, like single failure, but it's just a starting point. You're, in a sense, you're negating the negative and that kind of creates a space then to focus on better things so sometimes you know when you're feeling like again like oh i'm a failure or whatever you don't have the space to think of something better uh, it doesn't you, you're kind of caught up in that in that pattern so you might just say well what if i'm not a failure um what if i'm never going to be a failure what if i'm never a loser so you're, in a sense you're negating the negative and then you're creating neutrality to put some positive stuff into that's just a quick way of handling that as well <laughs> yeah that's good it's good to always have a, a jumping in point a starting point yeah you're feeling like you're in that place where the where the thoughts of lack or fear or scarcity are are kind of running the show like mm-hmm. they were for me for a period of time and a, another question i love is also another one that we that i mentioned earlier was is there another possibility here like even if you can just start to see that there might be another possibility maybe it's just a different way of kind of phrasing it yeah is there or even another um, possibility yeah or, or if i could phrase it another way um what are the other possibilities so it just implies yeah. that there are rather than if there is so what, what are all the many other possibilities uh how many other ways are there that this could work out how many other ways i can see this etc and that yeah because that's the thing we get so caught up in tunnel vision in our blocks and so on so like what else is there out there what else how much more is there etc etc it just opens up the field of awareness then you start to let things in and then you start to get more confidence because things start to show up in your life and so on Mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's so amazing how we can get such tunnel vision in our own lives right where we where we where we cease sometimes to see what's what the big picture is or what's really yeah. possible out there we it's like we've got blinders on or something it's like what you said earlier the word i think you said was hidden so things become invisible because we're so familiar with them and we get caught up in in the motion of it and so it's just stepping back maybe getting a piece of paper and just start writing what what are the thoughts that run through my mind how do i feel about this how do i feel about men how do i feel about commitment today how do i feel about if it's marriage you want whatever you want how do i feel and just start writing and don't think about it just start just keep writing so you're getting your more instinctive un- conscious vibes uh, your thoughts um because oftentimes we have conscious stories we tell ourselves and we tell everyone else that we're so used to but that might not be it you need to dig a bit deeper and get your unconscious stuff that's where you'll find the stuff that's where the power will be Mm -hmm. yeah and a lot of these things become really easy things to hide behind in our lives and then we and then we can't see why things aren't happening you know it's like busyness is is something we can hide behind yeah that's right that yeah. was an, that was another thing I had going on because I had a really busy corporate career and I was traveling a lot and so you know in my mind it's like, oh I'm just too busy busy yeah. too busy for a relationship well the truth was it was very painful at times mm-hmm. not to have that relationship but I could kind of hide behind the busyness and then then I didn't have to address what was really going on so so a useful question and let's say in that example would be if I didn't have the business busyness then what would I have to face or deal with or whatever else it is you know if I don't have this distraction then what do I have to face instead so that gives you a clue whether you're really busy or whatever else or there's you're just hiding behind something because after that there'll be something else you'll you'll fill that space with and so on and so on <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah really really great questions and and when we can ask ourselves these questions and really explore with openness, not with judgment about it, like, because no. I don't think it's helpful to judge ourselves based no. on what we're thinking yeah, or what might be going on. But if we can just explore these things in kind of a, a benign way, 
um, it, it's amazing what can sometimes open up. Yeah. I mean, I think when, when you work with yourself, you've got to be totally at peace with where you are and your journey. So it's almost like eventually your thinking has got to get to a point where you're not resisting where you are. Or it's like someone saying like, oh, I've been searching so long and like, oh, I, I really deserve it now. I really need to have it now. No, that's anxiety. That's tension. So in a sense, you've got to love your journey. Well, however long it's taken to get to this point, you've got to love that journey. And because then that's the vibe that you offer from love. Um, and so so it's not like forcing or pushing because that's that yeah, that's a different vibe. So So really, in a sense you want to you want to take it as a blessing however you've ended up where you are now whatever the challenge was you know for someone else it might be let's say they're a single parent and they think that's the reason why they can't have a great relationship well again find the blessing and whatever it is if you've been single for 10 years uh, you want to step into that as a blessing and what, what it offers you rather than as a limitation because again if you're if you're thinking of something as a limitation you're pushing through it you've still got that vibe there so in a sense channel that energy to it's a, it's a resource for you so how much better off are you because of your journey and who you are and whatever has happened or not happened, how much better off are you because of that? That's the way I would go forward. <laughs> so mm -hmm. embracing it. <laughs> yeah, I love that perspective of of seeing whatever you might see as, as less than ideal circumstances or whatever situation you find yourself in as a blessing and what that has provided you with. Because, yeah. because really those experiences prepare us for what comes next. They are blessings. Yeah. And that, that way also energetically, you're not resisting it. You're embracing it. Now you're channeling that energy to your path rather than fighting. So you're not now manifesting despite that you're manifesting because of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's beautiful to see things as a blessing and also to see, I, I like to call them miracles. Maybe you don't call them miracles, but mm -hmm. Even the little day-to-day -day things that could be deemed as like little miracles or little manifestations yep. of, of blessings or goodness in your life. Because we all yeah. have them if we're looking for them. That's right. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like manifestation, people expect miracles, like winning the lottery and finding their lover or whatever else it might be. But what about all the daily other miracles that we have? You know, the fact that we have a son, that we have all these other things happening. So it's like when you see miracles everywhere, you see miracles everywhere. <laughs> and it goes from there. Rather than like, you know, it being a rare occurrence, et cetera, et cetera. But it's like becoming familiar with the vibe of what you want. And so then the, essentially what you're doing is you're, you're making yourself and your energy malleable rather than creating like a discrete boundary between you and what you want. It's like it, it becomes much – you're creating separation by doing that. But with this, you're embracing everything and the oneness of it, and it's through the oneness that you'll get what you want. It's the integration rather than pushing and forcing and, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. So coming full circle on the how – I want to. I make. I want to get the title right. How um, everything you want to know about how love will manifest for you. So if we get the how, if we get the how right, um, the how is the manifesting. The how is the law of attraction. What is the how? I want to make yeah. sure we're really clear yeah. and leaving people so that message. The, the the how is really in the energy of your desire. And when I say the energy of your desire, it's not, like we say, it's not the seeking of it, not the wanting of it, it's the actual actualization of it. So in this case, we're talking about relationships, but if it's money or anything else, how would you how would you feel right now if you have what you want? Uh, oftentimes on my webinars, when people are trying to manifest money, I'll say to them, well, okay, what if I suddenly knocked on your door right now with 50 grand and I put it on your dining table, how would you feel? And uh, I say to them, besides the shock of seeing me, how would you feel about having 50 grand on your dining table? What's your instant reaction? So notice, is it a pleasant one or is it, is it scary? That's the clue. So, so think about what you want. How does it feel to have it right now? So in terms of that, going back to the how, th that energy has the how. But what happens is, we don't allow that. So law of attraction, we don't allow it to grow. So whatever you focus on expands and it attracts more thoughts and more thoughts and it, and it attracts a critical mass, which then leads to a physical manifestation. But what happens for many people, that mass doesn't get bigger because they short circuit it by saying like, oh, but it's not here. When will it happen? And was this it? Have I missed my chance? So that negates all the other good stuff. So you want to, um, like Michelle was saying, uh, when she was doing her post-it notes, it got bigger and stronger and stronger. That So you want the energy of what you want to grow enough 
that that it has a life of its own, and then it kind of uh, enthuses enthuses you to to, uh, to do what you need to do. You'll get the right answers, and you, you'll be inspired to to, uh, to take the right advice. Um, but it's the other stuff that gets in the way. So you're going to eliminate all that, and you're going to build the good stuff essentially. So the how is in the good stuff. Uh, it's just like you know when you have an apple seed, that seed has a tree in it, or it has a forest in it. You could look at it that way. So that's the same. It seems simplistic. It seems like really yes, your thoughts have the how in them, but it just most people they have a lot of noise going and there's a lot of negation going like yes but i can't and this and that and so they're negating the, the, the very benefits of it so that the how is actually in the desire you've got it within you you just need to allow it that's the thing and that will grow and nurture and manifest in the physical mm-hmm. yeah very powerful very powerful and do you feel that it's do you think it's important to also focus on the why like the why you would why you would desire or why you would want to have certain things in your life is yep. that something that plays a part Yes, and I think it, you can use it to raise your vibe further. So, like for example, why do you want to man in your life? It might be oh, so I can have an amazing family, so I can have someone I can feel close to, so I can. So, look at what's behind the why. That's the fuel behind the, the manifestations. So, so you've got the what you want um, and the why is if you have a they say if you have a strong enough why you'll overcome any how and so this is the thing to look, to look into but also when you write the why notice with the why is it like oh so i can be enough so i can feel complete so look at the implication of some of them are they coming what vibe are they coming from are they coming from a vibe of wholeness and integrity and manifesting and, and love and joy and so on or are they coming from incompleteness unresolvedness like oh um, i want to manifest my man so i can show them that i can have what i want well no that's a vibe that you're not enough and you're trying to prove it so uh, it's like showing like uh, oh i've been doing this for, for 10 years and i really need to solve it to to show that um you know so that show that uh, i can have what i want no you're not trying to prove anything you want to remember what i said you want to be in the energy as if you've already got it so so if you're in the energy of what you, if you've already got it you're not trying to prove anything you've got it that's it it's that simplistic that's the vibe so you're not trying to prove anything it's not because of what other people think you've got to take that out of it because if it's about other people that's mixing up your vibe not about other people it's not about worrying about failing it's not about um you know so it's, it's taking all that stuff out of it uh, it's it'll, it'll feel gentle it'll feel light it'll feel exciting it will build if there's a heaviness if there's an attachment explore that so there shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be an attachment there shouldn't be heaviness in it so that that'll come through the why as well so so when you say like why do i want it explore explore what comes up do does the why uplift you or does it get a bit heavy uh, and then when you tidy that up that will that will improve the what which will also bring in the how mm-hmm. yeah yeah and i want to ask you another question i do think the why can be powerful in terms of helping us clarify more deeply what we truly desire. And I also think when we, you know, there's this statement out there that I've heard that says, if you have enough strong enough, why the how starts taking care of itself. Yep. I also think some, some, there's some truth to that too. Yeah. And I also wanted to ask you this other question, which is, so, you know, there's all this social media and everything these days, and we uh, most of us use it in some ways as a tool, whether we use it a lot or a little. And one of the things that I've noticed over the year, the past few years in having conversations with so many people is that they find themselves comparing themselves and their lives to other people, a lot of times based on what they see on social media. So as you know, a lot of times people will post kind of the best, most glossy, moments of their um, lives out there on social media. And then maybe someone else is having not their best day and they're looking at this and they're kind of going, oh my word, my life totally sucks, right? Compared to these other people. So what do you recommend around something like that? Because I know it's a thing. I've talked to a lot of people over the last few years who I think are spending their time in that kind of comparison. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, that's the thing to ask yourself. First of all, why are you on that particular social media? Why? What's, what's your motivation behind? Explore that. Is it to show that you're enough? I mean, they'll that implies that, that you're not enough, that on some level you feel that you're not enough. And then on some level, you're probably going to attract the reflection of that somewhere. So again, remember what I said earlier, it's about enjoying the process. So if you're on social media, enjoy the process of it rather than doing it to prove something. Because again, Anytime we're trying to do something to prove something, there's the energy of not being proven. So you tend to, uh, and, and the implication is that you're not enough. That's why you're doing it. Because otherwise, if you know, if you know that you're enough, you don't need to prove anything. You know you're enough. That's it. That's all you need. So that's the energy you want to operate from. So if you know you have your lover, you operate from that energy. That's it. And so with the social media, so yeah, explore why you're doing it. Are you enjoying the process? I mean, 
my own story is like years ago, um, I followed my joy and what we're talking about here. And about uh, about 10, 12 years ago, I did that. And at that time, I felt inspired to uh, open up accounts on Twitter and Facebook. And it was just really just by inspiration. And I followed my joy. I started posting stuff. And over a short amount of time, I had rated by an, an independent website, I had one of the top 40 most influential profiles on, on Facebook. I had celebrities adding me and all sorts of people around the world adding me on there very, very quickly. And um, and it was only from my joy. I wasn't trying to become anything or prove anything. And so uh, so it's it, the energy is very powerful. It'll attract the right people into your life. If you feel you're not enough and you're working hard, you're going to have to work hard to compensate for it. And you're probably going to attract things that will occasionally remind you that you're not enough as well. So again, live in the energy that you've got what you want and see what you attract. You'll, you'll then be inspired by the right things coming into your life. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a lot of truth to that. I also think we can look at it if we see these um, wonderful things that other people are sharing. I also think we can look at that as a as evidence of abundance of the universe and what is mm-hmm. possible. Like there's, you could say, well, maybe their life is not all that perfect as it seems on Facebook or whatever platform. But on the other hand, Let's hope it is that perfect. Let's hope it is that wonderful because that's evidence of the abundance of the universe and what is possible. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. It's just, again, just be conscious of your vibe. Like, so don't, it's easy to get sucked into things and uh, like, you know, you see a few things and suddenly you think, oh, I wish I had that. So just be conscious of it. That's all. But absolutely. You know, so again, just notice what you're feeling on the inside. So do it for, keep it light, enjoy the process of it. It's something, it should be something that expands you rather than contracts you, essentially. Let's put it that way. Um, That excites you and uplifts you and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, this is such a fun conversation. I love talking to you because I think Uh these things are so fascinating. I think we only scratch the surface of beginning to understand what is really possible for us. And so I love dancing with these ideas that I think open up new possibilities for people, which is one of the reasons I love sharing your work. So thank Thank you you so much, Hemel, for joining me. It's so fun. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for inviting me. (laughs) Yes, my pleasure. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much. And thanks, everybody, for watching. We're so grateful to have you here and hope to see you for more. Bye for now.